Hello, in this part I would demonstrate how to create and delete tasks from the task code, in fact, because it is possible as well, not only at the beginning. We will use STM32CubeID in version 1.4.2 and uh, we will test our code on Nucleo L476RG. You can test it on other STM32-based hardware and using either STM32CubeID or STM32CubeMX software. So I would use one of the existing projects uh, which I previously created and I would start with the IOC project. In my case it is STM32L476RG micro and um, within system and core and this is a group I would select as a debug. Trace asynchronous SW which will give me two debug lines, data and clock and additionally SWO, so single wire output, which is in fact a one wire trace. Additionally, I need to change the time base source from default SysTick to timer 6. This timer 6 is my choice, uh, as this timer do not have any input nor output channels, but what really needs to be done is uh, change this time base from SysTick, because SysTick is reserved for free RTOS usage. Then, within middlewares, I have selected free RTOS in version CMC's v2 version 2, and um, from its configuration in this part we will use task creation and task delete this is why within include parameters please check whether vtask delete is enabled so this function within free RTOS api has been added to the code which would be generated this function name is uh, the function name within free RTOS api in our case um, it will be used by cmc's os uh, function which is called os thread terminate then we need to define some tasks so within tasks and queues uh, we need only one task so second task can be created from the code but just not to spend too much time on uh, let's say writing the code uh, i would generate two of them and i would comment some part of the code so task one and task two have the same priority this is os priority normal the same stack size 256 words and the entry function for task one is start task one and for task two is start task two there are no further modifications within the code uh, the clock configuration is a default one so 4 megahertz msi sourced uh, without any prescaler uh, nor dma uh, nor pll uh, so i can generate the code it will take a while then within main.c file we need to move some part of the code for task two so we will keep uh, the definition of the handler as a global one so this would be not uh, changed but i would comment out the priority settings for this task and i would move it as a local variable to my task one which would be responsible for the creation of this task two i would move this over here so within the initialization part of task one so the role of task one would be the creation of task two and then uh, within task 2 we will delete ourselves this is the code i would propose for this lab uh, so we have defined the attributes uh, for task 1 and we need to move the creation function uh, from here so it is done uh, between hardware configuration and the start of the kernel into my task 1 function body so i would put it just before our sign of life so this task action and uh, i would put some delay afterwards so i would uh, send my task one into into the blocked state uh, for one uh, second this is uh, let's say the function body for task one and for task two we will start with sign of life of this task then we will delete ourselves so ours thread and control space uh, terminate yes and we will select task to handle for those of you who were using free RTOS api in the past vtask delay 
allows you to use the null argument if you would like to delete yourself. So you are executing the function to delete the task from its function body. In this case, when you are using CMC's OS in version 2, it is not allowed. Null argument will be treated as an error so the function would be not uh, executed correctly. This is why we have specified this task to handle as a global variable to be visible for this, uh, this function. Let's check whether it will work correctly. Mm, so after this task termination, I would just add, add additional task action to check whether it will be executed or not. So we will try to display on a single wire interface X letter as well. After those operations, let's try to compile the code. In the meantime, my board is uh, connected already to the PC. Uh, okay, so let's check whether it will be correct or there will be some errors. There should be no. Okay, no errors, no warnings. We can start a debug session. So I click on this bug icon. And uh, after a while, I should see the debug perspective. There it is. So we will use the single wire viewer ITM data console. For those of you who started with this exercise, it's the first one, how to enable it. Uh, so I'm using this quick search on the top right corner and I'm selecting SWV data console. This is the first choice. Once you select it, you should have this uh, visible like this. To configure it, you press this uh, configure trace button and select the ITM stimulus port 0, so it will be 1 bit uh, uh, tracing using single wire pin, single wire output pin, which is PB3. Once it's done,